So you always start these problems by using the ratio test, right? That's the first step. So let's do it. So, because I think we've already done, as far as like the test is concerned, I think we've done all of the DEs, you know, pretty good. So limit, n goes to infinity. And since it's the ratio test, and like this is the one example we're doing, I'm going to go ahead and write the test down. So it's a sub n plus 1 over a sub n, and you have the absolute value. So you take this limit. Right, always. Yeah? How do we know that it's the ratio test? You can just always use it to find the interval of convergence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the question is to find the interval and radius. You can just always start with the ratio test. Yeah. There's one in the homework that's geometric, but you know, the chances of it being geometric on your test are like zero. So, <laughs> so, so, so ratio is the way to go. Uh, all right, so let's do it. So you have a limit. N goes to infinity. So a sub n plus 1 means you replace all of the n's with uh, n plus 1's, right? So you have absolute value. Now the negative 1 to the n goes away. You can just drop it. Um, you don't need to write it because when you take the absolute value of negative 1 to the n, if it's 1, you're going to get 1. And if it's negative 1, you're going to get 1. So no matter what, it's equal to 1. So all the negative 1's go away. You can just drop them. So basically we have x. You're headed out? Yeah, I got a physics test. Oh, today? Oh, good luck. Good luck. It's a hard life. X to the n plus 1. Remember last time you left for the Calc 3 test and you got top score, right? Yep, yep. I got the video, so that helped. Yep. Oh, oh yeah, from last time. Yep. yep. See you. Thank you. Good yeah, see you tonight. So replace all of the n's with n plus 1's, right? So, And then we're dividing by a sub n, so you just multiply by the reciprocal. So it'd be n over x to the n. Let me pause here. Let's just... Because I skipped some steps here. Right, I'm thinking of it like this. Thinking of it like this. Right, so then plug in n plus 1, you get this. And then when you divide, you flip it. You flip it. And the negatives go away because you're taking the absolute value. Any questions? Can yes? Put in n for the uh, negative 1 over n. Mm -hmm. that entire mm -hmm. in n plus 1. Mm -hmm. Why did that just go away? Okay. And 1 to the n plus 1. You can. So let me show you. I'll show you. So let's say we put it there, right? Let's just put it there so you see. And let's say we put it here, right? Mm -hmm. What happens is, what happens is, I'll, show, I'll actually show the step. I'll do it up here. What you can do is, you can bring it out of the absolute value like this, okay? Right? And then and then you can bring this one out too. You could do this. Um, this one, you can pull it out like this if you really wanted to. You could do this. I never do this, but you could. You could pull it out and you could pull it out. And then when you take the absolute value of this, you're just going to get 1 because it's 1. Because if you take the absolute value of negative 1 to the n, well, negative 1 to the n is either 1 or it's negative 1. If it's 1, you get 1. And if it's negative 1, you also get 1. Right, because if it's equal to one, you just get one. If it's equal to negative one, you just get one. In any case, you get one, right? Because this number, this is either one or negative one, right? No matter what. But you can put in anything random. You can only put in whole numbers: one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Right, right. So negative. Oh, I see. So negative one to the one is negative one. There's a pattern. Watch. Negative one squared is one. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1. No, it's okay. Negative 1 to the fourth is 1. In general, you can actually write out, it's actually a piecewise function. Check this out. It's actually equal to 1 if n is even. This is important. And it's equal to negative 1 if n is odd. So in any case, it's equal to 1 or negative 1. And so when you take the absolute value, you just get 1. And this is actually equal to extra life knowledge because you asked, and now I'm really interested, cosine n pi. Oh, random. <laughs> right? No, yeah. Calc 2, right? <laughs> it's always on their test. Like, cosine n pi over n, go. Like, what? What's cosine n pi? Ah! Yeah, it's this negative 1 to the n. So you can work it out. So Okay, so these go away. So, so now um, there's some other trickery involved in this problem. Right, no, really good question, Matthew. I'm so glad you asked, because I never go over this, right? I always just say, oh, it's one, but like no one ever asks. That's good. Like it's good to like see that extra step. I've never shown this step before ever in a classroom. First time ever. Mm -hmm. Ever. Mm -hmm. Never done it. Good, Matthew. Yeah. Does that mean zero is even? Zero is an even number, yeah. Yeah. Even means so a number is even, since you asked, uh, uh, Gilbert. No, not Gilbert. G G since you asked, uh, X is even. <laughs> 
if x equals 2, 2 n, where n is an integer. So 0 is equal to 2 times 0. So 0 is even, because 0 is an integer. Uh, 4 is equal to 2 times 2. So 4 is even. Um, 6 is equal to 2 times 3. 3 is an integer, so 6 is even. So odd numbers are 2n plus 1. Even numbers can be written in the form of, of 2n. Yeah, 0 is even. Yeah, <laughs> good. OK, so now there's some more trickery. So I'm, I'm going to do it up here. So this can simplify. If you have x to the n plus 1 over x to the n, you can write this as x to the n times x over x to the n, right, using skill, right, properties of exponents. Right? It's been a long time since you've done this. I'm glad we were doing this. I'm glad you emailed me, David, and gave me the idea to do it. I mean, because this is on your test. And then these cancel. Wow! Right, so you just get x, right? Yeah, this has been like months, right? So this is equal to limit n goes to infinity. Whoo! So, so all of this is just going to be x, right? Because the x to the n's cancel, so we get x. Then we have this n, and then on the bottom we have this n plus 1, n plus 1. You know there's a party today on campus? Anyone going to the honors party? Anyone? Anyone in honors? No one's in honors? They have turkey, I think. Yeah, no one's? Because like, you're not in honors? I thought you were in honors. I am. Oh, are you going to the party? No. Oh. <laughs> you're not? <laughs> I brought food. I brought, like, drinks, so. They I'm thinking about it, but I really want to go home, so. Oh, yeah. They told me I can go if I bring something, so I stopped and got some stuff today, so. Yeah, anyways. Okay, so this limit here, I just brought, like, high Cs and Capri Suns. This is 1, right, because the exponents match, right? Right, we're taking a limit as n goes to infinity, so we just get the absolute value of x, because this whole limit, this is 1. Right, because it's, it's like, it's the ratio of the coefficients, right? Like, think about this. Go back to, like, basics. If you have 3n squared plus 1 over 5n squared plus 2, whenever the degrees are the same, the limit is the ratio of the leading coefficients. It's 3 fifths. Remember that? So it's just that number over that number. So here, it's just 1 over 1, which is 1. So it's 1 over 1, which is 1. So you just get 1 times x. 1 times x. If you like, you can actually pull the absolute value out of the limit, too. Uh, you could do that as well. Any questions on this? Anyone, anyone not get this? So again, it's just the ratio of the coefficients. Everyone see it? Everyone see it? Make sense? Make sense? Hey, Spencer! Oh, oh. hello. <laughs> Everyone okay with that step? Okay, we want this to converge. For it to converge, it's been a long time since we've done this. Do you remember what we do? We set it less than a number. Do you remember less than, do you remember? Less than one. No, it's not the P series. It might turn into one. We'll see. We'll see. It's less than one. Yeah, this is the ratio test. So the ratio test says when you take this limit and you get L, like this is equal to L, if it's less than one, it converges. Equal to one, no info. Greater than one diverges. So we want it to converge. So we want it to be less than one. So we put this here because we want convergence. Okay. So you always do that. Okay. You always make it less than one. Okay. So now we have to solve this inequality. So we have the absolute value of x less than one. Right. Less than one. And then we drop the absolute value. I don't know. It's been a while since we've done this. So you have a one here, and then here. What goes here? Do you remember? Do you remember what goes here? Negative one, very good, Davin. Is it Davin or Davin? Dave, I'm so sorry. Okay, I should know. Like, I've known you for almost a year. Um, right, it's kind of it's all right. We're not done. We're not done. So we're looking for the interval of convergence. Now we have to check the endpoints, right? So now you got to take these numbers and you have to plug them into the original series, this one here, to figure out whether it converges or diverges there. So let's do it. Let's check negative one. So check. So check negative 1. So check negative 1. Let's check negative 1. So to check negative 1, we just take negative 1 and we plug it into this. Right. This is actually going to be a pretty easy one, I think. So it'll be infinite sum. n equals 1 to infinity. Okay. 1 to infinity. <coughs> negative 1 to the n. So we have negative 1 to the n. And then this is also negative 1, so it's negative 1 to the n again, right? This is a good test question, just so you know. Like, I know for a fact that this has been on test before, like this specific problem. I just don't know if it's on your test. I don't remember. Over n. I thought those were playing cards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the gambler. Like, I don't know. Like, what are those? Uh, uh, I have a test in psychology. Oh, oh psychology. Mm. Oh, oh. That's right. Oh, almost. 
almost. So when you multiply these, you add the exponents, right? So you get negative one to the two n. Ah, I see. Someone had a question earlier about even and odd. It's always one because two n is even. See, uh, good that you asked. Because uh, two n is even, so negative one to an even power is one. So this is just one over n. So Josh, you were fifty percent correct. Well, almost eighty, maybe eighty percent, depending on who you talk to. It's one over n, so it is a p series. But what does it do in this case? Does it converge or diverge? Diverges. Diverges. It totally dies. It diverges. Oh, you said, I thought you said converges. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Did you say diverges? Oh, you did? Oh, sorry. Okay, so diverges. I'll here watch it. <laughs> diverges by the P test since, you have to explain why, right? So since P equals 1, which is less than or equal to 1, right? So you do, you do have to uh, justify that. If you're feeling like overwhelmed by all these series tests, don't. Just don't, right? Just don't worry about it, right? It's not that big of a deal. I think it's only like 20 points on your test. And like if you, if you take your in-class and your take-home, it's like 320 points or something ridiculous. So, yeah. Um, why did you plug in negative 1 for x? Ah, because we have to check the endpoints. So, so then that means you're going to do it again for 1. Absolutely. So then why can you say it diverges if you just check them? Well, it diverges at negative 1. This, this series diverges, right? So that means this diverges when we plug in it. So it, that means we're, it, we're just, yeah, so it diverges there. At that so now. then now determine whether you put the parentheses or the bracket. Right, very good. So because it diverges, uh, will we use a parentheses or a bracket in this case? What do you think? Um, parentheses. Parentheses, very good. So I'll start writing the answer up here. Very good, 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 good. So parentheses, yeah, good, excellent. Parentheses. Yeah, a lot of times people feel overwhelmed by this. I don't blame you, right? When I, it's been a while since I taught Calc 2, but when I teach it, I spend a whole month on this. We spent a day doing series tests, I mean, or, or two days, like it's, yeah. But it's all right. You got this. Let's check uh, one. So check one. So check one. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry, say it again. Uh, okay, so when you multiply these, you add the exponents, right? So n plus n is 2n. And this is equal to 1. You can't do negative 1 times negative 1 because they have exponents. Yeah, so here. So, so two ways to do it. Two. Yeah, check this out. Two ways to do it. Method 1, it's equal to 1. Why? Because that's even. Method 2, let's show the work. How do you show the work? Superpowers. Watch this. Right? 2 times n is 2 times n. Isn't that cool? So negative 1 squared is 1. <laughs> and 1 to the n is 1. Yeah, it's good. It's good to convince yourself. It's like, well, you just, if you just put the rule like, like big A to the n <clears throat> times big A to the n, it's going to be right. big A to the n plus m. Right. That's the, that's, that's the exponent rule when you're multiplying. <coughs> right. Right, so that's what we're using here, exactly. You can't, you can't multiply the, the exponents, the, the bases themselves. Oh, uh, that's what you wanted to do, right. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, uh-huh, I see, I see, I see, yeah. Why does uh, 1 to the n equal 1? Because we don't have the absolute value. 1 to the n is 1, is 1 to the n. Okay, so 1 is 1. 1 squared is 1 times 1. 1 cubed is 1 times 1 times 1. No, 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 it's important to ask. No, so 1 to the n, you have n copies of 1, so you get 1. No, it's important. Like, no one ever asks. Like, it matters, right? Like, why is the sky blue? No, 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 no not really. That's different. No, I don't, no, I don't know if I did. That, that's different. That's, that's good. Yeah. Actually, I don't know why the sky is blue. Uh, all right, so let's keep going. I should know. It's the ionosphere. So when light hits the ionosphere, the ions, that part of the ionosphere change the light blue. Interesting. Good. Yeah. Excellent. I know a bunch of things. Yeah, that's good. Good stuff. All right, so checking one. <laughs> Someone knows. There's a lot of people in this room, a lot of intelligence. Uh, so you plug in one here. So you get one to the n. Ah, you get one to the n, which is what? But I'll write it. I'll write it. I'll write it. So plug in one. <laughs> it's pretty cool. So one to the n is one. So, so it goes away. So we get infinite sum. n equals one to infinity negative 1 to the n over n. So now we have to figure out what's up with this, right? 
What is it? Ah, oh, you're right. This time and last time too, I'm sure. <laughs> Sorry, I don't like. So yeah, it's a convergent alternating series. Very good. Um, so we just have to go through the motions, right? So when you're using the alternating series test, you have to determine what your a sub n is. It's always the non-alternating part, right? So, so it's just one over n, right? And then you just go through the motions. So the first step is to, do you remember what it was the first step in the AST? Take the, 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 the limit, yeah, the limit, take the limit. And just, I'll believe you just say it's zero, if it is. <laughs> you don't have to show it, you know, it's one over something big, so it's something small, or gets close to something small. And then the second step was to say it's something. Do you remember that word? Oh, Non-increasing, non that uncomfortable word. Uh, Patrick, he's not here, but he seems really good at it. He's like, oh yeah, like he, he really liked that word. This, used, this caused me so much pain. Uh, Non-increasing means decreasing or staying, or staying the same. And that's difficult, right? It's a difficult concept. Um, so both of these conditions are satisfied, so it converges by the alternating series test, which we abbreviated AST, so by the AST. By the AST. So it converges by the AST. So at one, it converges. So what does that mean we use at one? A parenthesis or a bracket? bracket? Bracket, very good. So we have our interval of convergence. We have our interval <coughs> of convergence. There is our interval. Beautiful stuff. The last thing to do is find the radius, which is really, really easy. Um, I like to draw a picture and overcomplicate things for the radius because it's more fun. So here's the picture. The center of the power series is zero because it's x minus zero, right? There's, there's, no, there's no c there. So here's the center of the power series. And here are the endpoints of the interval, one and negative one. The radius is the distance from the center to any of the endpoints. So the distance from the center to any endpoint is equal to one, and that is the radius. That's it. So that's it. Any questions on that one? Think you can do it again? On one day, I know. You have a week though, that's good, right, I guess. Do all the homework and practice problems. Hmm? Do all the homework and practice problems. Yeah, if you do the practice problems, you are more than ready. Do yeah, if you do all of the homework. <laughs> yeah, and the hardest thing is gonna be the take home test, because the in-class test is really easy. If you do the review questions, you are more than ready for the in-class test. Like, you will rock the in-class test, trust me. You'll be like, what? Oh, he said it was gonna be easy, but not this, no, I mean, still to study, I study, like, oh, he said it was gonna be easy, like, study. But, like, I could not make it any easier. Like, it's really straightforward. I think you only have three DEs on your test. That's it's, it. It's easier than the other tests when you study. Yeah, it's easier than my night classes test, too. So, they had, they had a harder test, so. Any questions on this stuff? Any questions? We have like 10 minutes. I don't think we have time for another DE, but we can talk about stuff. Yeah. I'm just trying to wrap my head around it. Around all of it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, negative 1 to the n over n equals what? 1 over n. This? You go over this? that and that how does that equal? Oh, the, how do I get this? Yeah. Ah, OK. This is a different thought process. So basically, this is an alternating series. So we're using the alternating series test. Mm -hmm. And so when we use that test, our a sub n is always the non-alternating part. Always. So you just memorize it. It's the non-alternating non part. I have a hard time. What is the non-alternating part of that? Ah, one over n. You can write it like this. Check it out. So it's the non-alternating part. You have to think of it that way to get oh, it. So you split it. Yeah, you do have to split it mentally to get it. Yes, that's why I split it. Yes. It yeah, so you should write it down. Yeah, yeah. Totally, totally worth it. Mm -hmm. Totally worth it. Any any other questions?